What's going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here heading into the second week of September in 2019. I'm also going to be breaking down the stock market futures very quickly, taking a look at the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Dow Jones to kind of get an understanding of where we could potentially be pushing this upcoming week. And we'll also break down the S&P 500 in index SPX very quickly so we can see what's been going on in the market. So if you enjoy this video, guys, if you find value in this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market, trading and investing. I'd, I'd greatly appreciate that, guys. So let's get right into it. Taking a look here at the SPX, the S&P 500 index overall, its performance over the past five days. If we chart, you can see it's been very, very good. Very exceptional performance across all of the markets here, including the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones. We hit a low at about 28.90 and we gapped up all the way to about 29.85. The S&P moving nearly 100 points in the span of this week from low to bottom. So that's very, very good for the S&P. So right now, if we go back to that longer term chart on the 184 hour, we notice how it is a bit overbought, right? The RSI is inching towards that 70 threshold, which remember the RSI, it's a threshold from 30 to 70, right? Anything closer to 30, if this line's closer to 30, that index future stock ETF, whatever it may be, it's getting more oversold. And if it's getting closer to 70, it's getting more overbought, right? And I do have a video all about the RSI. Just search my name, Stasurfest Relative Strength Index, and it'll pop up if you want to see uh, more details in terms of that, right? And we can see again, it's over overbought now. Maybe we pull back and retest 29.50 old resistance as a new support. And from there, we may continue the uptrend. We may break and potentially test the 180 SMA, which is this gold line here on the four hour chart. There are a bunch of different things that can happen. And hey, we might not even pull back, right? We may just gap up even further heading into tomorrow. This can literally just be a short term um, kind of a cool off stage before we pop. Or again, it may be a pullback time to that 2950 level. Time will tell guys, but those are just a couple of spots that I'm personally watching and some indicators that I'm watching on the S&P. And over Overall right now, the market futures... If we take a look at the S&P futures, the slash ES, this is the E-mini S&P 500 index futures. They're currently up $2.75, up 0.09%. So not much movement there as of right now. The NASDAQ is up $11.50, up 0.15%. Not much movement uh, in terms of the NASDAQ either, honestly, guys. And if we look at the Dow Jones very quickly, this is up literally the same as the S&P, up point. 0.09% up $25. So typically, I look at the futures to kind of get an understanding of where the markets could potentially be moving for that upcoming week. And Sunday, I don't know if I already mentioned this, but Sunday, every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard, the futures market opens. So you can see the Dow, the NASDAQ, the uh, S&P, gold, crude oil, silver, um, you know, natural gas, whatever it may be, right? You can see that and then plan your your week or even trade futures if you trade the futures market, right? So this is pretty interesting, guys. So that is not really telling us. The futures are not really telling us much right now because they haven't gapped up heavily yet and they haven't really gapped down heavily yet. They're kind of just stuck like uh, hovering and just uh you know, fiddling around the levels that we were at this past Friday. So until we see a big gap up or gap down, um, right now we're just simply consolidating based on these futures, right? And you can see them. And by the way, guys, just add them to your, uh, you know, uh, think or swim watch list on the side. If you have this indexes watch list like I have set up, you know, add the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the futures, whatever other futures you watch. This way it's organized. This way you can look and pull them right to your, uh, you know, chart. And, and break down break them down very easily that's what I personally do so 
Now that we talked about that, let's talk about some stocks and ETFs in particular that I am watching. You guys saw in the title and in the thumbnail, you guys, guys, and you guys is going to be looking very interesting this upcoming week, especially because we found out at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard when that futures market opened, we found out that natural gas actually gapped up a bit. So this is a very good sign because if you've been breaking down natural gas and if you've been watching my videos where I've been breaking down natural gas on these videos we've been talking about these channels that natural gas has been trading on or trading between right the first channel is between 240 and 248 to around 249 250 which with this gap up we've officially broken out of that channel right we're officially in the next channel which is a very bullish move for natural gas and very bullish for you guys in general because you guys trades based upon natural gas right it goes up at a three x rate whenever natural gas is going up right that's how it works that's how it trades so if we look a bit closer to the 90 day two hour chart you guys can see exactly what i'm talking about right the first channel was 230 to 240 right and we called that out a couple of weeks ago when that did occur we covered that in, on the youtube channel right we covered that in the videos this was about a week a week and a half ago we gapped up closed all the way up to 240 right we pulled up we pulled down, held 240 as a support, popped up, and we were fiddling right at that 249 level again, that resistance from a couple of weeks ago, back in the month of July. And now that we gapped up, again, like I said, we are officially in the next channel, which is between 250 and 255, right? So now we might be pulling back a bit. You guys can actually see real time here that these futures, they gapped up, and now they're starting to pull back. Now they're starting to, to retrace a bit. So what we might be seeing here is a potential retest at 250 as a new support which would honestly open up a very good opportunity to get into you guys maybe even tomorrow right if you guys are uh you know interested in potentially playing this for yourselves but again please do your own research guys i am not a financial advisor i'm not here on youtube to tell you what to trade i'm here on youtube to document my experience to break things down from my perspective and to give you guys an idea to maybe spark some interest in your minds so you can go do research for yourselves you can do due diligence for yourself and maybe you can trade what i'm breaking down if you understand it right for yourself that's kind of the whole goal so if we pull down 250, right, hold that, we could fill up to 255, and you guys would be a very, very juicy play um, from there. And you can kind of see it happening on you guys as well. We broke 1830, which was that resistance level. And now we're in that channel between 1830 and about $20.30. So if we pull down, if natural gas does pull down, or rather now that it gapped up actually, I'm interested in seeing where you guys might open if, if natural gas's price holds. Let's say it holds 251 where it is now. You guys might even open up in 19... Uh, I'd guess maybe like 1930, maybe 1940 is where you guys ends up going up. And it's going to be tricky, guys, because if we open up green, we could literally just gap all the way up to $20 tomorrow, right? That's very, very possible. But if natural gas pulls back heading into tomorrow morning instead of just running up, which, again, would cause you guys to fill this gap to the upside. But let's say natural gas pulls down. You know, you guys could be pulling down a retest 1830 again before bottoming out there potentially and then running up. So for me, I would prefer... Honestly, I don't really mind which scenario plays out because it's both... They're both... These both scenarios... Both of these scenarios... You can play them both, right? You can play the momentum, which would be to the upside and profit... But you can also wait and be patient and maybe even get a better entry point if we get the pullback. We just have to kind of wait at this point and see what natural gas and you guys, what are they going to, what are they going to give us tomorrow in general, right? We just kind of have to wait. But overall, that's the breakdown right now. You guys, I'm loving it. I think it's very bullish right now. If we break 20, there's literally a margin all the way up to about $23, right? And if we go to natural gas very quickly, if we just look at the levels here <coughs> excuse me guys let me show you um 
maybe after 250, obviously 255, like we said. The next one would probably be, no joke, $2.65. That would be the next level that I'm looking for natural gas to go up to, right? 250 to 255. We hold 255. Maybe this happens in the next couple of weeks, and then maybe we make our climb up to the 260s again, like, you know, maybe in the next couple of months. Probably not the next couple of weeks. That is a bit of a massive move to kind of, uh, you know, pull off but hey maybe it does happen who knows right guys these are just levels that i'm watching um regardless of whether it's a week away two weeks away a month away three months away you know until we get there i'm going to be watching these levels so now that we talked about you guys broke it down let's talk about the next one which is jnug jnug is one that i've been covering on this channel and jnug has been getting crushed over these past couple of days because as the market has been going up gold has been taking a hit right and gold it's not what jnug directly trades based upon right but gold does affect jnug because jnug trades on gdx which is a gold etf right if we take a look at gdx GDX has been getting killed over these past couple of uh, days from $31 all the way down to about $28.50. And again, this is a gold ETF, gold miners ETF. And if we go to gold, you guys can see the pull down from $15.66 all the way down to $15.13. And GDX and gold have one thing in common on this four-hour chart. And you guys can probably see it. They're both holding this gold SMA, this 180 SMA on the four-hour chart. So this is a spot that over the past couple of months, has been a level of support so i'm interested in seeing does gold hold here does gdx potentially hold here and end up running up if it does guys jnug right now is a very very good buy in my opinion a very good potential buy um if the markets do end up selling off, that's the one thing, though. That's the one thing you have to keep an eye on. If gold is starting to plateau on that 180 SMA, if GDX is as well, and the markets start to sell off, you have a scenario where this could be a perfect time to hop into JNUG because we've seen it, guys. We've seen the data, at least us that have been following the markets religiously daily, you know, every single day. We see that when the markets sell off, gold goes up it's kind of obvious for a lot of people out there but some people like more beginners they don't really realize this for the most part gold does well when the markets are selling off and when the markets are in panic right let's say trump sends a tweet let's say we get news that there's not going to be an interest rate cut you know this is going to send the markets down heavily especially if that's a negative tweet revolving the trade war more tariffs whatever it may be this is going to send the markets down and what's gold going to do most likely boom it's going to go up guys and jnug gdx this is going to be a great play so i'm watching it on the scenario that gold ends up going down right or rather the markets end up going down so like i've mentioned a bunch on the channel guys it's important to have different trading scenarios for different occasions when the markets go up have a plan when the markets go down have a plan so you can make money on both scenarios on both occasions because the markets don't go up every day and the markets don't go down every day so if you want to be making consistent money um you know maybe you're not trading every day maybe you're trading once a week but let's say you want to make money one week when the markets go down and you want to make money when the markets go up the next week, you have to have strategies for both sides of the spectrum. Very, very important. So let's talk about Facebook, guys. FB right now, Facebook's at a point where it seems like with if you kind of look through all of this trend, all these trend lines and all of this jazz, take a look at this one trend line here. The one that's running up kind of diagonally. Overall, over the past six months we've held this trend line on facebook we've bottomed out at 122 the next bottom was 160 and now it seems like we've bottomed out at 177 with a bit of a resistance under that 180 sma on this four hour chart so what i'm seeing here guys is kind of a a wedge forming on facebook between this trend line and this resistance at $190. And this is very similar to another stock we're going to break down here in a couple of seconds, or rather a couple of minutes. And just stick tuned for that one, guys. But Facebook here, it's interesting because once this <clears throat> ends up getting tighter and tighter to 190, we need to see what it's going to do there. If we break out into the 190s, 
This is very, very bullish, guys, in my opinion. We could potentially go from 190 up to 205. That would be the next channel I'm seeing. Or maybe even 190 to 205 and then to 215, which is, I believe, actually, no, no, that's not an all-time high. I'm probably wrong. Yeah, it's not an all-time high. 218 is an all-time high. But anyway, 216 is right near that all-time high, which that would be a very big gap to fill. But if it does, guys, remember, Facebook... This company is kind of China proof, right? Even though the trade war does affect the overall markets and it over and it and it obviously affects Facebook as well because it is one of the biggest companies out there. If you want to look at a company that might do well regardless to what's going on in China, Facebook might be one of those that could do decent, right? On big drop days, on big red days, obviously Facebook will get will get affected, but overall I feel like it's been doing decent Actually, despite this drop here, over the past week and a half, two, three weeks, it's been doing decent, right? So Facebook is definitely one to watch, especially if we break 190. We could be going up to 205 potentially, right? But if we end up getting rejected at 190, we start to go down and retest this trend line and we break that, that's going to be bad. We're going to potentially test 175 there. We may be dropping even further. So Facebook, that's a decent one. Atv is another one that is kind of in the middle of this channel that I kind of want to see a pullback on because the RSI is very overextended right now. It's very overbought. And Atv is one of those gaming stocks, video games, game stocks and a lot of you guys know video game stocks have been crushed over the past year at this point at has been from 85 down to 39 we found a support at around 40 bucks 39 dollars right around there and we've been breaking resistance after resistance right first it was 48 then it was 51 52 now it seems like we got rejected by 56 we're in the middle of this channel from 40 or rather 52 to 56 so ideally guys again since the r size overbought i'd love to see a pullback to $52 to retest the spot and then maybe fill the gap up to 56 This is a very good swing trade um, that I'm personally interested in playing. And uh, it just needs to pull down for me to get in, honestly, guys. But let's say it breaks out even. This could be another reason to entry. If we break out above 56 hold 56 and then pop up and potentially fill up to 62 but overall there's a lot of potential in these video game stocks especially at v ticker symbol atvi in my opinion just watch these guys there there there's a lot of opportunity but again just do your own research please don't just buy based on my opinion you know that's not the goal of this channel whatsoever and i'm sure a lot of you guys that have been following me for a while you already know that right i, I tend to keep it real um on this channel all the time so SBUX Starbucks is another one that's in a situation uh, similar to situa situation as Facebook. Guys, let me pull up uh, Starbucks very quickly. 184 hour chart. Take a look. We're in a wedge kind of right between the 180 SMA and this trend line resistance at about $96. That's squeezing Starbucks into a wedge right now. It's squeezing the candles into a wedge. You guys can kind of see it. If I draw a trend line like that, <clears throat> this is going to squeeze either one of two directions. Again, it's going to either pop up just like Facebook, very similar, right? Just like Facebook might break into the 190s, Starbucks here, it needs to break back up into the 96s into the 97s, and then it might fill the gap up to that high at nearly $100 at about $90, $99.72. So if we pop, guys, this is going to be another potential swing trade that I'm watching, 3%, right? 3% margin of profit. But if we break the bottom of this trend line, we break that 180 SMA, oh man, that's going to be pretty ugly on a technical basis. We might be falling on in the short term to the downside if that ends up happening, guys. Who knows? We might be going down to the low 90s. That could definitely happen because I'm seeing a support around the lower 90s at about $91, $92 right around here. So if we break, we may be going down, fill up to $100 in the short term, which again offers that 3%. I'm liking that. So the last one that I'm watching today, guys, uh, heading into tomorrow is LABD. LABD is an ETF. It's a inverse ETF. It's a leveraged ETF that trades based upon SPS IBI. And SPS IBI, um, this is the S&P Biotechnology Industry Index. So this is very simple, right? 
SPSIBI, this biotechnology index, when it's going up in price, LABD is going down, right? But when it's going down in price, LABD is going up in price. And we notice here <coughs> some brief technicals on SPSIBI is this four hour chart is showing us there's a bearish cross, the 50 SMA is crossing below the 180 SMA. That hints towards potential more bearish moves, more bearish sentiment, right? We see that. The uh, 50 SMA is acting as a resistance. That's very clear. We've been getting rejected, lower lows, lower highs, the nine yards, all nine yards of, uh, you know, what that pretty much entails, and or rather for what a downtrend entails. And now it seems like we've gotten rejected again under that 50 SMA, where we may be pushing down even more. And this is important, guys. We have to watch what's going on in the market pre-market hours tomorrow, right? Is SPS IBI, uh, is it going to gap down, right? Is LABD slowly gapping up? That's going to hint that SPS IBI is gapping down, right? And at this point, we're holding the 50 SMA at a higher low. If we pop and continue to run here, you know, on that SPS IBI drop, you know, if we end up hitting a lower low on SPS IBI, this could end up propelling us upwards of 10% on LABD. And I'm really, really interested in seeing if that ends up playing out. So that kind of does depend on what the markets do potentially. Um, actually, if we go back to SPS IBI, I might be wrong with that statement there because it does seem like the biotech industry index has been doing bad despite the markets going up here in the short term. So it might not even be correlated. It might just be something in terms of biotech in specific, that's not doing too well right now. Uh, maybe one of the large cap companies in this index isn't doing too well right now. I haven't done too much research into it, but it does seem like it's underperforming the market, at least in the short term, which again is a pretty good sign for us to potentially trade LABD. So that's it for this video, guys. Obviously, I'm watching a lot of these market ETFs as well. Uh, you, you guys know that at this point, if you follow the content, I'm watching these daily TVIX SPXS, UVXY, SQQQ, all of these right here. These are intraday plays that I typically trade on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when the markets are volatile, right? So if you enjoyed this video, guys, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me and join our Discord group chat and our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see more into my personal life, whatever it may be, stocks, call outs. I break down charts on there. I show my profits, right? All of these different things. That's on my Instagram, at Stas Surface. That is linked down below, guys. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I appreciate all you guys watching. Peace out. What's going on, everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back.